So, it's an energy shield that they can deploy on the planet. Yes, Captain. We can't see through it, but the Covenant are up to something. Agreed. We need to find out what that is. Can we use the ship's cannons and take it out directly? We may destroy whatever's under there. Covenant shield technology is susceptible to superheated plasma. Aren't we field testing some plasma-based rhinos? Pillar of Autumn inventory shows they have some prototypes. It may take some time to get the right power settings. I'll need to be on the ground to do that. Professor, Sergeant Forge, let's get that shield down. Ah, babysitting again? Hello everyone, this is Phoenix bringing the sixth mission of my Halo Wars Legendary Walkthrough Guide. This mission is Dome of Light. Now, I know that this mission gives a lot of people difficulty because of how many times the Covenant attack you or how much the Covenant, uh, the Covenant harass you. Uh, but this mission is actually very simple, straightforward, like I said. Um, all it requires is a little bit more patience and just knowing what you're facing. For an example, in this mission, you're going to be facing a lot of Banshees. You're going to be facing a lot of ground units. You're not, not, you're not necessarily going to be dealing with a lot of vehicles, so... Now we have a lot of options going our way. So in this mission, the strategy I'm going to be using is completely ve uh, vehicular. There's going to be a lot of tanks, there's going to be a lot of wolverines, and we're really just going to punish the enemy for what they decided to go. And that is kind of what I want, like, that's how I want a lot of players to think about when it comes to this mission. Like, think about what you're facing, think about the counters for the mission. Uh, if you can just see what you're facing, you can you can counter the enemy, you can beat them out, and you can just help yourself uh, by not going for an example uh, marines or flamethrowers or something like that because you're just really going to have a bad time and it's just not going to go well. Now another thing that uh, in my opinion is very very helpful especially as, uh, as somebody who had done this mission plenty of times and messed up and kept going and like just had to keep retrying is that you want to have Forge go around all the map. You don't want just to grab the supply crates in your immediate vicinity. You want to grab all the supply crates around the area because that's going to jumpstart your economy. I don't know how many supply crates you gather, but it's like you're getting already another over 500 guaranteed in just extra supplies that you that you can spend much quicker and that just jump starts your economy. That means that you're able to get two heavy supply pads a little bit quicker than if you just uh, completely never got these. That means you're sitting there behind in your economy. So that's another extremely, um, that's a macro level look at the game and I like to cons uh, keep talking about macro versus micro. And I'm going to create a, a video uh, later on about what micro is and what macro is and very and talk on that subject a lot. But in this, I just want you to know that grabbing those supplies is extremely important and it really does help you out. It, don't ignore those supplies. It's the game giving you free money. Like, you don't just turn that down. You want to make sure you're using your map, uh, you're, you're using your forces wisely. And especially in this, uh, this point in time where it's just completely empty time, we're just kind of sitting here just uh, building our base, we're get macroing up our forces we're doing everything because we can't really uh, do the mission objectives yet we want to have a base that uh, is built as fast as possible that way we can accomplish the mission in a much t uh, in a timelier manner I don't think timelier is a is a word but for, that's that's what I'm kind of going for is just a little bit faster because speed speed kills but precision does not and that's what I want to tell you guys is you don't need to be fast to beat this mission. You just need to be you just need to be able to recognize what's going on. So once you actually start to realize what's going on, what the enemy is sending uh, is sending you, you can just start to say like, oh, okay, they're sending me banshees. I'm gonna go wolverines type of deal. Or for uh, for an example, like I have all these supply crates. Maybe I can get. Um, with the extra money, I can get these uh, heavy supply pads a little bit uh, earlier, for an example. It, it, it just really does help you out. It helps um, because it's just, it, it's again, it's like free money. And you're going to be able to get 
a lot more done if you uh, if you grab these supply crates. But that's all I'm going to say about the supply crates because we're going to start getting into the fun stuff, which is actually start to uh, get our base and stuff up and running, start getting some forces. Now, as you saw earlier on, I went into my field armory and I got the uh, reserves tech. So reserves is going to be very, very important because this mission you are going to lose quite a few units and we want to replace those units as fast as possible. Reserves does increase the uh, time. It decreases the time to get, for an example, tank, marines, anything. And we definitely want that tech. That tech is going to be extremely important for us because, again, we are going to be losing a lot of forces to hunters and banshees because they do counter us too. We're just going to counter them more effectively. Now we're just keeping an eye on this Banshee because I just want to see how cool it is to kill this. But again, the enemy does like to attack you, so you're going to want to have turrets that are able to withstand the punishment of Banshees just non-stop harassing you. And that is very, very important in this mission as well. You're going to want to have uh, medium and large turrets. You're going to want to get both upgrades. For right now though, we're only going to get the medium turret because we want to get our forces, as I said, as fast as possible. We get the field armory for the first time as well in this mission because we get the field armory tech, I'm sorry. We do get field armories in previous missions, but this is the first one where I'm actually leading off with my field armory, getting that tech, and then going into the mission. Or getting uh, getting the forces, for an example. So this mission, I started out by getting the reserves tech, the medium turret tech, and then the reinforcement tech. After that, you're going to want to start to upgrade the, uh, basically what will be the tanks and your wolverines. So we want to get Caster Shell and Bali, and then we're going to get, uh, and then we're going to get the second level tech for them, which is going to be Power Turret and Dual Launchers. After that, we're going to just start spending that money and getting those uh, forces as fast as possible. Start cranking out turrets, uh, not turrets, but tanks and uh, wolverines in a uh, as fast as we possibly can. If you don't really want to build that field armory, I would actually person personally I would recommend you going to ve uh, vehicle depots. That way, one is just uh, creating uh, tanks, the other one is creating wolverines, and you just keep just spamming those. That way, you get them very very quickly. The three techs that I definitely want you to get out of your field armory are reserves, medium turret, and reinforcements. Those three are very very important in this mission and you can't beat this mission without getting the proper amount of units that's going to take to defend all five rhinos because it's going to be a lot there's going to be a lot of enemies and it's going to be very very uh, difficult to handle that after a certain amount of time especially after the third rhino where we're going to start taking out uh, enemy buildings and stuff like that in your area so as you see here i destroyed my field armory and I get, I got another uh, supply de uh, supply pad. Sorry. The reason why I did that extra money, of course, extra income. You you only need those three upgrades. You can be very, um, you can think strategically about how you want to upgrade as well. You don't need every upgrade. You don't need to get the adrenaline. Are we using anything that is uh, that's an infantry work, uh, an infantry uh, style? Uh, Force. We're not using Marines, we're not using flamethrowers. We do have Spartans, but they're not moving at all. And we aren't going to be covering a large amount of ground with our with our uh, Marines or our flamethrowers, so we don't need that tech. We don't need um, anything else other than that turret tech, the reserves tech, and the reinforcements tech. And it, that's that's really as easy as I can say it. It's it's very very important. Uh, very very important. That you get those uh, those upgrades because it's going to be very important later on. Now be very careful with Forge. Make sure that you're keeping an eye on them because Banshees do do a lot of damage to Forge. Um, I like to keep Forge next to the turrets. He's very, very good against taking out uh, Banshees. His Goss turret does t do a lot of damage to them. Um, later on, you are also going to want to upgrade your turrets themselves to... Um, to a specialty turret that takes down a certain, uh, that counters a certain enemy, uh, an enemy class, for example. Um, in this mission, I like to upgrade them to uh, to missile uh, to missile turrets that take out the uh, the enemy banshees much quicker. 
or much yeah much quicker they counter them a little bit more effectively um, but la that's later on make sure that you're keeping an eye on your Spartans as well you don't want them to die you want them to live because they're the only thing right now that's uh, basically keeping the Covenant at bay so make sure you're using Forge uh, reinforcing your Spartans and taking out the things that uh, really do the most damage to a Spartan which is gonna be uh, like the Jackals for an example um, now that we're getting those upgrades, I do want to talk about how to get the skull. The skull does pop up right next to your base after you, uh, have killed 50 Banshees. That's a very simple, easy, uh, mission objectives. It's going to get you some easy points. They're just going to send those Banshees. You just sit there and kill them. As I said, easy. Um, nothing too difficult there. Uh, the other, there's an achievement for this mission. This, uh, the achievement is... Uh, not to lose a rhino. We are going to do that. That is very very difficult, but I'm going to show you guys how to do that And that's why the patience uh, comes into play here It does take a little bit of time to get this mission going the right way for you And I'm going to show you guys how to do it um, Pretty much So the way that the strategy works is that you get your 40 out of 40 uh, population and you just keep uh, make sure that you have that uh, at first and you clear out all the covenant in the area making sure that each and every position is safe before you uh, basically put them into the uh, before you get the rhinos is what I'm trying to say Local units. now as you saw Alice get out of the reactor Alice got out of the reactor but we don't need the uh, four tech anymore we only need uh, the three tech uh, three reactor tech to get tanks or wolverines so i prefer to put alice into another sniper tower that way we have a little triangle of spartans going on you are going to want to use heal and repair whenever you see uh forge or any of your buildings damaged uh severely again it's very very important that we keep in all these turrets and forge uh up and running we don't really have an army yet so we can't we don't really have any base defense other than what we currently have in terms of forge and uh, those turrets starting to get everything going we have those two tanks i like to do the ratio of three tanks for every one uh, wolverine you're going to be dealing with a lot more uh, ground units than you are with air and air is kind of easy to deal with especially when you have tanks um but yeah this mission starting to come together getting our forces um Making sure we're using, keeping Forge near the skull. That way we can grab it immediately. Here's when they start sending those uh, hunters. So here, it doesn't really matter to send your... I wouldn't send your scorpions in on that yet because... Um, looks like Jerome can handle it, but... As I say that, he's getting swarmed by jackals and everything. So we might be sending them in. Yeah, we're just going to send them in. Use canister shell, take out those uh, those units. Take out the jackals because that's the thing that counters a infantry. Take out those hunters because I don't want my I don't want my scorpions to get hurt anymore. <laughs> but yeah, this mission it, it's very very easy. You just need to get your forces up and running, and uh, again, it's just a cakewalk after that point. Once you start getting your forces up, you can really just start hammering the Covenant. They're just not going to be able to uh, keep up with your damage, especially when you have Wolverines uh, taking them out in the air and your tanks just obliterating everything on the ground. It's just not going to look pretty for them. It's going to be very easy for you to handle all this. Now, there are a little bit of uh, like some issues sometimes. Like For an example, you can be dealing with a lot of Hunters. Uh, Banshees can swarm. There's small like little uh, like RNG based things that kind of just happen. Even if that happens you should be able to handle whatever the Covenant throw at you. So just a little just making sure that you guys know that no matter what they send at you you should be able to counter it effectively with uh, tanks and uh, Wolverines. So we have our six. We have our six tanks. We got those jackals attacking the uh, Spartan over there. 
I'm gonna start clearing out more of the enemies around here. Now, if you can use uh, your Wolverines to stop spirit dropships, that's actually a very, very smart thing to do. Um, in my opinion, that's excellent because what you're doing is, is you're basically saying to the Covenant, uh, you're not going to be able to land here. So it kind of makes their hunters kind of uh, obsolete. So that's why Wolverines are very, very important on this mission. They can stop Banshees. They can stop uh, spot, uh, spirit dropships. It, it just... They're... The strategy here is pretty much an all-purpose strategy to help get you a gold medal. That's really what the strategy is all about. And it's also the most effective at keeping your rhinos alive. Now, once you hit 40 out of 40 population, you are going to be able to get your first rhino. That is what I'm going to tell you right now. You're going to be able to get your first rhino as soon as you get all the forces you need. Gonna keep an eye on the forces around here, making sure no uh, large amounts of units drop, especially any of them that are very, very uh, detrimental to our uh, our units, such as tanks. We might have to heal that tank in the middle there, because kind of yeah, there he is. He's gonna be singled out and microed away. Uh, he's kind of locked in there though. There we go. He's just going to go by the base. He's going to get healed up and he's going to help us take out the rest of the Covenant. Uh, but needs to handle taking out the base. So here we go. We're going to heal up these two Scorpion. Uh, we're going to heal up our base plus the Scorpions right here. We're going to move these guys back. I didn't mean to grab all of them. And just hold that area. Now, like I said... A lot of this is just making sure that you have your force ready and keeping everything nice and easy for you to deal with. Probably should have used the caster shell and volley later on, but should be all good. So essentially what happens once you get your, uh, your forces ready is you're kind of just sitting back. You... You request your Rhino, of course, but what you're going to do is you're going to take a little bit of your army, a little tiny bit of them, and you're going to use them to defend the Rhino. We have plenty of forces to defend with, so what you're going to do is you're going to use the uh, Scorpions here and one of the uh, Wolverines to help defend the, uh, against the Rhino. Uh, defend against, no, they are going to defend the Rhino. The rest of your forces here are going to sit next to platform 2 or position 2 where they're going to take out the enemies that spawn up there once the first rhino is in position. Remember to always make sure that you keep an eye out for any of these attacks before you get your rhino. Also remember that your rhino um, will get protected by ODSCs a little bit after this uh, attack happens. So as you saw there, the enemy did build the turrets and all that wonderful fun stuff immediately, and we immediately destroyed it. That's a very good, uh, good use of keeping an eye out for, uh, for the enemy, and that immediately clears out position two. And we're gonna start getting everything in position two ready, as well for the second rhino. So that covenant outpost was um, easy to take out, and we're gonna send our forces over to defend position 4 and 5 because everything right now is just on to getting rhino after rhino it's just gonna get much easier and it's just as I said it's gonna get much easier for uh, for you once you start getting these rhinos gonna make sure that we're microing them effectively making sure that we're not losing too many units not losing too much health on units Making sure that we're painting the right amount of units as well. Gonna heal these guys as well as the Rhino. Gonna be very, very... It's it's very, very important to always know what you're doing and why you're doing it. Especially in a strategy game. You don't want to be doing things for no reason. Keep an eye out for everything. These ODSCs are very, very helpful. Like They're helping us take out these spirits. Uh, the Wolverine is doing a fantastic job at taking out the spirit dropships as well. 
everything is much easier because you have some air counter. Taking out some of these these covenant uh, ground forces, like they're not they're not even landing one of these spirits. So only one of them is really a threat, and eventually it's just not even going to be there, there's not going to be a threat. So I do want to point out that this mission does get progressively more difficult as you start getting more and more rhinos on uh, in the area. However, you can just, just like we did with uh, the Covenant Outpost, which is supposed to make this a tiny bit more difficult for you, you can just completely obliterate it by having everything already completely ready for to be destroyed. And that's what we're going to do for position 4 and position 5 in a few moments. So the first time it fails with two, uh, like I said, it's just, we're just going to split them up, makes it easy. We didn't even worry about what's going on with the rhinos because it's not important. All that's important is that we basically get everything into position. Keep an eye on that rhino, we don't want to lose it. Because that's the... It's for the achievement. There we go. We're going to put that down because the hunter was the last thing we were worrying about. Okay, so now that we got the rhino in, uh, into position, we are we got our third rhino ready. We're going to send Forge plus this rhino over to position 3. They don't really attack position 3. I like to send Forge over. I like to send Forge over because he's the, e he's the only one that I can really spare of my attack uh, of my army to help defend that rhino in any case the covenant do attack it or any covenant try to do anything to it it's literally the only option i have gonna send the rhino plus forge over there right now making sure that nothing's getting too hectic over here looks like one of those tanks needs to be healed but healing repairs are on cooldown Now, like I said, you want to be careful here. Forge is a little weak against these guys, but you also have that Rhino, and Rhinos are pretty good at taking damage, as well as doing damage. So, once the third Rhino is in position, that's why we have these guys set up the way we do. So, position 4 and position 5 happen simultaneously. We're going to defend position 4 and position 5 from Covenant Outposts, as well as the enemy, like the enemy locusts that come up as well, because we want to make sure that this is done as fast as possible. We want to lose as many as, not as many. We want to lose as few units as possible during this attack. Local units. Gonna make sure that these guys are all set over there. We're gonna just send them over there to help defend because we are getting a little too much attack. We're dealing with a little too many uh, enemies right now, so we're gonna kind of postpone taking that third. Um, that third rhino right now we lost that tank too so we're also gonna have to wait because we want to be at full strength at all times whenever uh, we start out like we aren't gonna want to be anywhere but the best in the best position that we can uh, when we put a rhino up or put a rhino in a position so I hope that this is that this is all making sense because um, this mission is Really simple, as I like. To, as I said, it's. It really just comes down to how well you can uh, counter the enemy, and how well you uh, can handle the enemy's uh, attacks. Now we're gonna get everything back into position for um, for position one because we don't need everything from position one to come with us. Everything in position two needs to stay put as well. And we need to split up the ones in position 3 and... Uh, not position 3, but the ones in positions 4 and 5. We want to split them up right now again. I'm going to split them up. Four tanks to one Wolverine to take position 5. And two tanks and a Wolverine to take position 4. The position 4 is much easier to take, in my opinion, than position 5. So I like to keep position 5 um, in a nice little... Uh, I like to keep position 5 with the most units. Gonna get uh, the 4th Rhino. So there you go. There's the 
the enemy just spawned all those buildings out of nowhere, so we're going to destroy them once we see this fail. So here we go, we got the enemy locust coming up, getting ready to take out all of our stuff, but we're already ready over here, so we're going to just kind of chill. So, cool thing is, is that we already have everybody here. We don't need to worry about it. The rest of your stuff will be really, really easy. A lot of this is is just quick, like, a quick reaction and making sure that everything works out perfectly. So RNG kind of has to be on your side with, with, uh, on this for it to work. But a majority of the time, this works, and a majority of the time, it's it's very, um, it's very very reliable. Is the right word. So first things first is we need to get two ran, uh, rhinos to position four and to position five, making sure that we're keeping the one the rhinos currently at position one, two, and three alive as well. What I like to use on this is to make sure that we don't lose any units is to send the transport, the pelican dropship, over to position four with our rhino already in position. That is that's a very good use of using your transport, making sure that you're not getting a uh, overwhelmed by it so there's that rhino we want to make sure that it's okay as well uh kind of got a little bad there uh looks very close oh more rain saved the day took the aggro from the uh from the rhino but once you clear out the enemies there it's very very safe not really gonna see many units near uh position four you're gonna only see them at position five Position 1 and 5 are really, really hectic. Keeping an eye on that Rhino. Very close to dying. So hopping back over. We're going to use that transport again. Send it straight to uh, position 5. We're going to want to make sure that it's as close to the, uh, to the center of that beacon as possible. That way it immediately triggers. And once it triggers, basically that's the end of the mission. You kept all 5 Rhinos alive. That is really what it means. And it's really, really uh, nice because once you get control of the MAC turret, the mission is essentially over. No matter what you do with your MAC turret, uh, you can spend all 40. All you need to do is to de de destroy the enemy base. So, I, I like to say that this mission is fairly easy once you understand how everything is supposed to go. And once you see all the rhinos, they all fire, uh, expel the shield. And we just get control of the Mac turret. So boom, boom, boom. And dome power supply is down because of Anders. She's so heroic. And now we got our Mac, shot, uh, our Mac cannon. And we're just going to start obliterating every major ba uh, base building that we can. Um, you can focus whatever you want. I like to just target each, in, uh, each building individually. And then target down like air, whatever you want to do, just whatever you want to do. Honestly, like once you start to destroy the dome, that's really like that's satisfying to see. Once you see the Covenant base all destroyed, and the grunts just running around all crazy. But as you see here, we did accomplish it in uh, 26 minutes within par time. We got the par score. We got that gold medal. I hope you found this video helpful, even though I kind of rambled a bit. If you guys did, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. I'll see you guys next time for Scarab.